Greetings everyone, through here, welcome to the demo. In today's demo, we're going to look at Pop SQL. Pop SQL is a collaborative SQL editor for teams to write queries, visualize data, collaborate by sharing the results and the queries. Signing in provides two options. There is a desktop option and there's a cloud-based option. Today, we're going to be leveraging the cloud-based option. This brings us into a canvas. To begin, we're going to take a look at the layout of this canvas. On the far left side is the account. The account provides certain options, preferences, managing connections, and sharing feedback. Let's jump into preferences. We can see the general preferences. You can set the query results to show to the bottom or to the right. By default, it shows to the right. Later on, we're going to show what that difference looks like. Below that are options for the editor. You can show a minimap. If you have a long query, the minimap comes in handy. You can autocomplete, word wrap, highlight text, but also you can change the theme. For the remainder of the demo, we're going to be leveraging the dark theme. Next are keyboard shortcuts. For people who prefer that as an option, this could help with productivity. Next are the connections. You can add a connection to your favorite RDBMSs. Snowflake is what we're going to be leveraging for today's demo. For this, click on Snowflake and put in our credentials and the details necessary to connect to Snowflake. Once our credentials are entered, you can test the connection and save that connection. I already, cre I already created a connection for today, so we can skip this step. Within the preferences, we have options for more settings, for schedules, for DBT, and billing. Depending on your needs, I will recommend you go in and look at those options. Let's go back to our main page. Coming back to the main page is where queries are written. The queries we create and work with are categorized in several options. There are team queries, my queries, and queries written in draft mode. To create a new query, you can either leverage the create button on the left pane, or we can leverage the create button on the far right side of the screen. Let's go ahead and create a new query. Our query has been created. I'm going to give it a name. Let's call this demo hub one. This will be the very first query we write. The query pane provides a number of options. We can see when the query was created, schedules for this query if we want this to run on the schedule. We can add variables into our query. We can put in comments as we collaborate with team members and save those comments with our queries. We can add the queries to dashboards and we're going to touch on this a little bit later. We can also see version history of our queries, which we're going to touch on this later as well, and a few more options. On the far right side, working with Snowflake, you can select your connection to work with. You can set the context to which this query will run, your role, your warehouse, and the database. In this case, we're going to be leveraging the Snowflake sample data. Let's go ahead and write our very first query. The query shows up on the query pane. A couple of things to call out. If we have multiple queries, the query being selected is highlighted with the green bar to the left. We have this query selected, and now we have this query selected. If I were to select this query and hit run, just the selection would run. If I wanted to run multiple queries within the worksheet, you can go ahead and run all statements within the worksheet and limit the results too if you want. If you wanted to share this worksheet with someone else, you can also share the worksheet, change the status of that worksheet, and allow people to view in private mode or edit the worksheet as needed. Now going back into the revision options. Here, there is the option to integrate with a source control. For today's demo, we're not going to touch on this. 
but there is that option to integrate into GitHub or GitLab for versioning your code. Now we're ready to run our query. Let's select this query and hit run. As the query executes, the results are shown to the right. As mentioned in the preferences, if you prefer the results to show to the bottom, you can always switch that position by moving the results to the bottom. Let's move this up to get more realistic. Here are the results of our query. We can explore the results through drilling and see more of the results. We can take a look at the SQL statement behind that, or we can chart this result into a graph. This view provides more real estate. If we want to see the same, we can always go back and see the results showing in the bottom. As a data analyst, this could be a very appealing option. If we wanted to, we can also export the data itself in different formats. TSV, CSV, JSON, and a few more. If you wanted to share a link to the results, copy the link and share this with a team member. Once our results are created, we can add this to a dashboard. This is a concept I'm going to touch on a little bit later. Let's go ahead and create our second query. Demo Hub 2, a query executed and the results come back. Let's put this into a chat. Now we have some visualization around that. If we needed to make edits, we can always go in, drill into that chat, make some edits. If we preferred a different visualization, say a line chart, depending on the data set, you can always change that. If you want to change the color gradient and a few more formatting options are available. Let's stick with the bar chart for now. Depending on your needs, if we need a more real estate, we can always click on that icon to get more real estate to work with. Let's close on our queries and go into the dashboard. The dashboard capabilities allows teams to take queries and visualize them, create a private dashboard and call this demo hub. The dashboard is created with some metadata, the ability to add queries, the abilities to view details of this dashboard, schedule refreshes of the dashboard, manually refresh the dashboard or to share. Let's begin by adding a query to this dashboard. Add a query. This gives us the option to select from previous queries to add to this dashboard. We can either add them as tables or we can add them as chats. Let's add our first query as a chat. This brings the visualization to the dashboard. Resize this if we want to make it more visually appealing. Let's go ahead and add the second query to the dashboard. To do so, we can come in here and select. I know we had demo hub two, and we can select this query. Query two shows up as a table. Depending on the preference, we might want to keep this as a table. We might want to change this into a chart. To do so, go in and view the chart or go directly to the query. Once you go into the query, see the chart that was created, add this to the dashboard. And here we select our dashboard, the Mohawk dashboard. This query gets added to the dashboard and we can see that below. So many different options to add queries to your dashboard. Now, if we're satisfied with our dashboard, let's give it a title to explain what this dashboard is about. So clicking on add text, this gives us a widget that takes plain text for us. And this text is markup, so you can format it accordingly. Here, let's give it a name. I'm gonna expand this to have a bigger name. I'm pleased with our dashboard. We have a title, some charts, some data, which can be filtered and searched and the dashboard is very interactive. If I wanted to share this with the executives, we can go ahead and share this directly with the executives or team members that need to consume this dashboard. If the underlining data of this dashboard changes in Snowflake, we can set a schedule for this dashboard to be refreshed regularly with the notification being sent to the email address on file. We can manually refresh this dashboard if the underlying data has changed. All of this is interacting with Snowflake and doing the visualization for us. Next on the dashboard is the schema. 
We access that by clicking on the schema icon. We can select the connection we want. Select the Snowflake connection. This shows us all the schema objects available within the connection. See the different databases and switch between them. The sample database is what we use. See the schemas within that particular database and search to limit the particular schema. The search allows for searching of the table as well as the columns. If you had a database with lots of schemas and lots of objects, having a search feature could be handy for you. Let's drill down into one of the tables. Here we can see the particular object. Assume I use customer most frequently. I can pin this and it will show up as one of my pinned object. This makes this easily accessible and increase my productivity. Let's click on the customer object. See information about the customer object, which is a table, the description, we can add tags, frequent users of the table, users history, and a lot more. If you wanted to see a preview of data within this table, we can either preview or we can go in and click on preview. This will query that table for a preview of the data within that table. Here we have the preview of the data within the table. As before, we can see the queries that was being run, export the data, chat, drilling to explore, and a whole lot more. Going back to our exploration tab, we can see tables, views, functions, and procedures that are all available within the Snowflake instance. Next, let's see some of the search capabilities within the UI. For this, select one of the variant data within the schema, daily totals of weather information, and preview this data set. Here is JSON data. Assuming we wanted to filter this for particular records available within this data set, PopSQL provides a search functionality, search for Chexu. And right within that, PopSQL is searching into that data set and is showing us the record called Chexu. So many options available for you to search to discover not just the objects you want, but also the specific data you might be looking for. If things changes on the schema site, you can always come in and refresh and get the updated schema showing up within this platform. There you have it. Hopefully this demo was helpful to you. Snowflake provides a very capable UI called SnowSite for interacting with the platform. You can write queries, visualize those query results, and a whole lot more. But that said, there is the understanding that teams out there might have workflows that necessitate them to use client tools outside of the SnowSite UI. In that case, there are a lot of options we've explored on this channel. PopSQL is another option as a modern data tool that helps you interact with your data platform. Hopefully, this video was helpful to you. If you like it, don't hesitate to like it. Share this with somebody that might get value out of it. This has been through. We make videos highlighting the capabilities of modern data tools. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next demo.